So we refer to um, different stakeholders when we need to help someone get a need met that we're not able to meet. So sometimes we might need to refer someone to an independent living center or a protection and advocacy center if they need some legal services. Um, you know, we also partner really closely with all of the other ADA centers in the country. So there, like I mentioned, there are 10 ADA centers. So um, we work together to kind of do some public awareness and outreach, um, education, those types of things. So we each center works kind of in its region, um, but also we work together as a national network um, across the nation. Um, but we work again closely with other disability organizations. We do have relationships with the enforcing agencies for the Americans with Disabilities Act. So the Department of Justice and the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, for example. So um, when we need to put people in touch with those uh, entities, we can do that as well. Mm -hmm. What impact does your organization have on communities as a whole? Yeah, so I really like to think that, you know, um, when we are able to provide, um, you know, helpful and clear guidance on uh, the ADA and how people can access their rights and responsibilities under the ADA, it's uh, it has the impact of making, you know, our community and our region more accessible as a whole. So even though we can't um, advocate on behalf of other people, um, we believe that educating people on what their rights are gives them a really important tool that they need to be able to advocate for themselves. Um, and because we work with not only people with disabilities, but also, you know, the businesses and the um, employers and government entities, uh, we also help them understand that, you know, compli complying with the Americans with Disabilities Act is, um, you know, feasible, um, it's not scary, it's something that will benefit them, you know, and um, so we can help, you know, sort of help people understand how to get into compliance with the ADA and then, um, you know, and then their their business or their place of employment is more accessible, which hopefully overall Im improves outcomes for people with disabilities um, and kind of goes back to the spirit of the ADA, which is, um, you know, providing equal opportunity for people with disabilities to live independently and freely in society um, among everyone else. Mm -hmm. Lastly, how do you create an inclusive and welcoming environment for people with disabilities? So um, I think that's a really uh, important question. You know, I think probably f the first thing that um, that I can think of is that we we're a team of people with disabilities, right? So at, all of us at the Rocky Mountain ADA Center have, um, you know, various disabilities, and so uh, we're a part of the community. And so I think that's really an important part of being inclusive. Um, certainly, we work really hard to make sure that we're in compliance with the ADA, right? I don't know what kind of ADA center we'd be if if we didn't. So uh, we make sure that all of our our um, website, our digital communications, our documents, things like that are, are um, made accessibly and um, our people are able to use with various types of assistive technologies. Um, and also just making sure that we stay up to date on, um, you know, disability etiquette and language and making sure that we, you know, know the preferred language and, um, you know, as we know, language changes over time and, and sometimes words and phrases can start out being not offensive and then become offensive later on. So it's important that we continue to stay educated and up to date on all of those things. And really, um, you know, tr working hard and being intentional to include people with disabilities in the design and delivery of our services. So, um, you know, we're not just doing things on behalf of di people with disabilities without getting their input. Um, and so, you know, those are the, those are the key ways. Mm -hmm. Very important points indeed. Mm -hmm.